Hey everyone, I'm Ryan, and today I'm feeling very lucky because I get a chance to drive the 2022 Ford Maverick. That's right, it's Ford's new compact pickup truck, and it's finally ready to hit the road. How small is it? This small. So today, we're gonna find out how it does in the curves, in towing, and in off-road. But we'll also be looking for potential problems because after all, this is now a two truck race between the Maverick and the Hyundai Santa Cruz. Go check out Travis's video when he got to drive the Santa Cruz if you haven't done that already. Before we render a final verdict between the Maverick and the Santa Cruz, we'll wait until we can get them both back home for our full set of evaluations. But I think there are still a few things we can glean from our driving today. Don't you? Let's get to it. We're ready to go, so let's get started by you clicking that like button. And don't forget to hit subscribe and hit the little notification bell too so you get alerts when we post a new video. If you're thinking about selling a car, go to edmunds.com slash sellmycar right now to get a cash offer on your vehicle. Now let's hit it. Okay, so we're finally behind the wheel of the 2022 Maverick. This model that we're driving right now comes with the standard hybrid engine. That's a 2.5 liter four cylinder attached to an electric motor. And it makes 191 horsepower and 155 pound feet of torque. Now, just for comparison's sake, the Santa Cruz base engine makes the exact same horsepower, but it has about an extra 25 pound feet of torque over the Maverick. However, from behind the wheel, the Maverick doesn't feel underpowered at all. It's got a nice response when you step on it, and there's definitely enough power to get you going, get you around, get you up hills, stuff like that. Now, is it a ton of power? No. But for a base engine, especially one that is aiming to be extremely efficient, it's not bad. So one of the things I wanted to focus on coming into the Maverick is the ride quality, because remember, this is coming based on a small SUV architecture that's designed for comfort, and so how would the Maverick fare? Well, it's definitely not like a big F-150 or a Ranger, but it's also not super smooth. There's a little bit more rumbly than I was expecting. Now, what do I mean by that? It means in terms of ride quality on the road, even if the road is super smooth and straight, you do get a little bit of bumpiness. You also get a little bit of rumbling when the hybrid engine transitions from electric power to the gas motor. Now, when it comes to the steering, I was pretty skeptical coming into the Maverick, and the reasons are I do not like the steering in the Ranger. There's dead spots all over the place. I also felt that the Bronco Sport was pretty similar in that respect, but the Maverick doesn't really have that problem. The steering has a nice weight to it. It's progressive and linear. It doesn't make you give more effort through certain points and less effort through others. So that's definitely a big plus. The braking does kind of have that problem. Now at speed, if you're just slowing down a little bit, no problem, nice response, good feedback, at least for a hybrid system. But when you're going around town, coming down at low speed all the way to full stops, there are some points that you're not really sure that the brakes are giving you all you're asking for. And so you push a little bit harder and then it's a full stop. So again, it's just a little bit of that unrefined truckiness that you get used to after a while, but you just can't come into this thinking it's gonna drive like an escape, because it doesn't. Now we've hopped out of the hybrid, we've stopped at a distillery outside of Nashville, kind of our halfway point for the day. But a few thoughts on the hybrid. Just as with its truckishness, you never really forget that you're driving a hybrid either. You get the noises, you get the sensations, and it's got a CVT transmission that can be a little lurchy sometimes, so you never forget you're in that either. But it doesn't come out as like a mishmash, it just comes out as something that's like a unique character to the Maverick. But we're done with that. Now we're gonna jump into the two liter turbocharged engine with all wheel drive. Made sure to get that for you. Let's see how that does. Okay, so we're back in the Maverick, this time in a turbocharged 2.0 liter four cylinder, this one with all wheel drive. Well, first of all, this has 250 horsepower, 277 pound feet of torque. 
Again, just for reference, the Santa Cruz in its turbocharged version has about 30 more of each. But let's discuss how the Maverick does on its own merits. From behind the wheel, this is a much more traditional, predictable driving experience than the hybrid version was. You don't have some of that, uh, some of the awkward transitions of like coming into electric power and onto gas or using the CVT or using the regenerative braking. This is all very straightforward, easy and predictable. So instead of that CVT, we have a traditional eight speed automatic transmission. It's not the fastest thing in the world. You are gonna feel the shifts, but it brings the power on really nicely and doesn't hesitate to downshift when you need it. And speaking of needing power, there's good thrust from this engine too. It doesn't feel like it needs an extra 30 of anything. When it comes to the braking, here we're coming to a red right now, so this is perfect. Very, very smooth, responsive, good feedback the whole way through, which is not the experience that I just had in the hybrid. You could probably get used to that, but you'll immediately be familiar with the way this one works. One area where both powertrains do feel similar is in the ride quality. Just like with the hybrid, this one feels a little bit bumpy, even over smooth pavement. Now, it's not unpleasant, it just, gives you that trucky feeling. The Maverick isn't a crossover cosplaying as a truck. I like that it really gives you the full experience. Let's talk about your options. Like the Ranger, the Maverick comes in three available trims, XL, XLT, and Lariat, like this one. The hybrid engine is standard on all three trims. The turbocharged two liter is available on all three trims. But here are some things that come on every Maverick, regardless of trim. The crew cab and the four and a half foot bed. It's got a low load floor and low sides, so it's easy to reach in, grab things, pull them out. Again, the theme is keeping it simple. As someone who's covered trucks for a long time, there can often be a dizzying number of options, configurations, powertrains, and all that. With this, Ford was saying, here's a small truck, here's how it comes, Here's what it does, simple. Inside of the Maverick, it's pretty no nonsense in here in that there's lots of plastic all over the place. But the interesting thing is that Ford added elements of character and personality so that even though there's a lot of plastic, you feel like you're getting something out of it. There's interesting shapes or colors or textures. And to be honest, it's something that we would have really liked to see an approach like this in the Ranger but instead it's nice to see that the Maverick had a ground up thoughtful approach. As far as technology, every Maverick gets a standard eight inch screen with standard Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. You do have to plug them in though, there's no wireless option. You can option up to a similar eight inch screen, but that one will be run by the Sync 3 infotainment system, which we really like in Ford products. One problem though, is that there's no option to add integrated navigation. So while you still have your Google Maps and all that, if you're in a place with no cell service, you don't have Ford's navigation system to fall back on. Moving to the back, the first thing I wanna show you is under the seats. I've got my laptop bag in here and there's plenty of space. Now the space depends on which configuration you get, but this is actually pretty roomy. Getting in, I'm at six feet. Do have to duck a little bit to get under. And then there's this nice cutout for your head in the ceiling and frankly, I need every inch of it. Leg room is tight. I can move them a little bit or rest them against the front seat, but if I was much taller, it would probably be a problem. Overall, this is a livable, usable space, but don't come in here expecting F-150 levels of comfort. So now we've jumped into a Maverick to test its payload and hauling capabilities. This one is loaded up with over a thousand pounds of concrete in the bed. Now Ford says the Maverick's payload capacity is about 1500 pounds. This one is a Lariat, so it's got some extra equipment that takes away from that rating. So this one is rated at just a little bit over 1300. So you have a thousand pounds in the bed and then you have me in here. We're right up against that maximum capacity. So how does it feel on the road? Well, it feels really good. Um, the Maverick at this level has a tow haul mode that you can activate, so we have that on now. It changes the gearing so the engine behaves differently. It changes the steering, which is noticeably heavier now. 
Um, and going down declines like this, where you know braking could pose a problem if you're at or near capacity like this, um, and it feels really good. The Maverick is really controllable with this much weight in the back. Engine braking is definitely helping to slow the truck on its own, so you don't have to be riding the brakes the whole time. And you know, one of the interesting things about this comparison with the Santa Cruz is Travis's video explained in great detail how difficult it is and complicated it is to really nail what the Santa Cruz's payload capabilities really are. With Ford, they were like, oh, it can do 1,500 pounds. Here's 1,000 pounds in the bed. Go for it. Easy. So that was a pretty impressive showing from a hauling standpoint. That was with the two liter turbo engine and the Maverick really wasn't stressed very much at all. Um, I've been on a lot of truck drives and it's not very often that what they give you to haul with is right up against that maximum payload capacity like that. But now we get to really put it to the test because they're letting us do the exact same thing, but with towing. So now we're towing again with the turbo two liter, in tow haul mode again. The engine is definitely working hard, but it's not overworked by any means. The Maverick has no trouble getting up to speed. We got up to 50 fairly quickly, and it's holding it with no problem, even going up an incline here. Steering feels good too. Again, it's heavier because of tow haul mode, but it feels confident, you know, with the max trailer and towing package that we have in this vehicle, the maximum towing capacity goes up to 4,000 pounds. So in this vehicle, it's optioned up with the max trailer and towing package. That gives you a bunch of extra equipment like a seven pin wiring harness, um, additional cooling so the engine can handle heavier loads. And it comes with an integrated trailer brake controller, which a lot of times you have to add on in the aftermarket. Um, but here with the Maverick, if you add that package, it just comes with it. So Ford has really offered everything you're gonna need for towing all on that package. It ups your maximum capacity to 4,000 pounds. I've been in cars that have a high maximum capacity and then don't feel very good once you're actually driving it. A lot of wobble when you brake, a lot of moving around while you're steering. Here we go, uphill on an on-ramp. Um, but the Maverick just feels stable, so it's handling it really well right now. So towing with the Maverick was an interesting experience. Um, the truck definitely feels like it's working hard, but that's okay. It wasn't overworked, it didn't feel unstable or anything like that. It's, it feels confident and it feels like it can handle it. I didn't feel the need to use the integrated trailer brake um, on long braking descents. I would just tap it and the engine braking would take over a lot of that before I had to get on the brakes. It wasn't strenuous at all. So with the Santa Cruz in some configurations, you can go up to 5,000 pounds max, but I wonder how that feels. So we'll have to get it in to test and see for ourselves. Um, but in the meantime, Maverick, pretty impressive first showing. All right, now we've done the hard work for the day. Let's go have some fun at the off-road course. Off-roading in the Maverick. In this one, we have the FX4 package, which gets you a pretty comprehensive package of things. Uh, you get additional skid plates, two in the front, one high strength steel underneath. There's also different shocks and different tuning. And the package comes with all-terrain tires, or you can option up to Falcon Wild Peak tires, which are also all-terrain. That's what we have now. One other thing you get with the FX4 is additional drive modes. So there's a sand mode, and then there's a mud and ruts mode, which we are in now. You get some other things like hill descent control, um, but it's missing some of the heavier duty stuff that you might find in even a Bronco Sport or some of the Ranger packages. And this is not the most strenuous off-road course I've ever been on either. There's only a few things that we can glean from impressions like this. Uh, one is that it's just fun to bounce around in the Maverick. Uh, we're not doing anything too overly difficult no real chance to use the hill descent control or anything, but we are going up some rocky inclines here in a second. And that'll give us a chance to test out the grip. Just see how it does 
it was good throttle modulation so even like a very small press on the gas is giving me good response as we're bouncing up here earlier i hit a rock that skittered along the bottom of it so it's probably a good thing that that high strength steel plate is there um, but we're going at like a about a 10 degree incline right now we're going to climb over a log there we go up and over yeah the maverick is not having very much trouble on this and it's not a very difficult off-road course but can give you a little bit of extra protection to get where you need to go today we saw pretty impressive on-road manners towing hauling and even a little bit of off-roading but the real appeal of the maverick is its small size and daily usability without some of the concessions that you get with a full-size or mid-size truck. You're probably not gonna have huge gas bills. You're probably not gonna have huge parking headaches. Now, as it compares to the Santa Cruz, we can't wait until we can get both of those trucks in to our home base and do a full comparison video. We'll have that comparison video up as soon as we're able, I promise. What's really clear after today is that the Maverick is a tough little truck with a lot of upside. And yeah, I said truck, it earned it. Thanks so much for coming along on this journey with us today. Don't forget to click like and subscribe. And if you want to read a full in-depth article, click the link in the description below.